So the first type of a return path that I want to address is this notion of constant communication, of just always being there, maintaining top of mind awareness, not allowing your prospects and your customers to forget that you're there, to forget that you care, to forget that you're willing to add value. So uh, let me sum this up and, and make this very, very simple, okay? If you aren't communicating with your list at least once a week, communicating in some way, shape, or form at least once a week. I'm not saying you necessarily have to do it every day, but at least once a week, you obviously hate money. I mean, I can't think of any other way to put it. I've heard time and time again, people saying, well, I don't want to email my list. I don't want to follow up because what if they unsubscribe? Well, if you're not talking to them, what do you care if they unsubscribe? You've functionally, by not communicating with them, have already unsubscribed them. And this whole time we've been thinking about this in the terms of a relationship in terms of dating, right? So remember where we've been. We started off just making sure that, you know, we're dressed appropriately, that, that, that we, you know, took a shower and washed our, you know, hair and, and, and have some maybe funny jokes and anecdotes to tell on the first date. That was all determining product market fit. And, and then when we went out, and, and we went out to go and, and meet someone. You know, we didn't come on strong and say, hi, nice to meet you. Would you like to go for a walk in the woods, right? Instead, we said, hi, nice to meet you. Um, you know, can I buy you a drink? Um, you know, what's your name? Let's, let's talk and have a conversation. And then if that went well, you didn't say, okay, great, let's get married. You said, hey, you know, we should meet up sometime and, and grab a cup of coffee. Something really okay. That was, that was the tripwire. And then the coffee went so well that you actually got them to go out on a date with you, a real official date where you picked them up and dropped them off or vice versa, right? Um, it was a real formal date. The relationship changed that you now got to your core offer. And then we, we even went so far as to get them to, to maybe go as far as the profit maximizer, whatever that is for you, right? Uh, and now what we're basically saying is, well, yeah, I know that, that we went and had coffee or you know maybe we even had a first date, but... I don't want to bug them. I don't want to follow up. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to call them. Well, what are your chance of progressing that relationship if you just stop talking? Heck, even if you get married, right, if you don't communicate with your spouse on a regular basis, how healthy is that relationship going to be? The answer is not very healthy at all. So you must follow up. You must follow up. And if you're concerned that, ah, but they don't want to hear from me, it's really simple. Add value. Send them stuff that they want. It's not that they don't want to hear from people. It's that they don't want to hear from people who are only ask, ask, ask. So you're going to see with our particular type of, of follow-up and communication strategy that it really is a value-first strategy. It really is about making sure that you're there delivering value and delivering what they want and, and in some cases asking them what they want. So we're going to get into the specifics and the tactics of how we do that a little bit later. But for now, just think... Am I communicating with my list at least once a week? Am I talking to them? Because if you're not, I would like for you to change that habit. Okay, we, I really want to change that habit. And we're going to give you some tools to do just that. But again, it's not just email. The return path is not just about email. Follow-up is not just email. You should be talking to your customers. There's tools like CallFire that will allow you to communicate very effectively and efficiently, to do outbound calling to your customers, to welcome them, to say, hi, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. Not to sell them, just to say, hi, welcome, thank you. Just that will have an impact. Just that. And even if you just wind up leaving a message, right, a little love note, just that can have a huge benefit. That's something that you should be doing. You should be talking to your customers if you can afford to do so. There's also faxing. Now I know faxing is outdated. Nobody really sends faxes anymore, except they do, especially in a business to business type environment. I know right here, this office that I'm standing in, where I'm recording this, we still have a fax machine. And when that fax machine goes off and we receive a fax, it makes noise. I notice it. We walk out there. What is this thing that happened? Nobody is sending faxes anymore, which is a great reason to send someone a fax, right? You don't just want to do it. And, but if you have fax numbers, by all means, send them out. There's companies like eFax that, that make this very simple, even if you don't have a fax machine. So remember that. And I would argue, most importantly, you should be attending all of your industry gatherings. You should have a presence there. If your brand is going to be seen as a leader in your industry, then you should have a presence at industry gathering, whether again, whether it's B2B or B2C, you need to be talking to them. The, the folks in your market who are attending industry gatherings, who are showing up, they are the most aspirational out of everyone. They are the types of customers and clients that you want. 
right? And they're also the types that you want to talk to and know because you want to model what they want because they're the ones that you want to go out and get more of. And so if you don't go to these and you don't talk to your most aspirational uh, prospects and customers and clients, then what you're really going to be doing is, is engineering, marketing, and, and sales and copy that talks to, in some cases, maybe the vocal minority, the people who do take the time to call in and talk to you, which oftentimes aren't your normal average consumer. Now, the people that take the time and spend the money to go to industry gatherings, those are the ones that not only are they normal, they're actually extraordinary. They're the ones they want, and they're the ones that you want to talk to. So you should be doing this and having a constant presence, showing to your market, hey, I'm here. Showing to them that you care. Showing to them that you're not going to be forgotten because you intend to be around for a very, very, very long time. It matters more than you think that it does. And if we remember that this is a relationship, right? That this whole business, this entire funnel, this entire conversion funnel process that we've been talking about, it models human relationship. That's why follow-up, that's why constant communication, that's why sending little love notes every now and then is so amazingly critical. So now that we've covered why constant communication is so critical. Let's talk about some of the different ways that you can do that in some of the future lessons.